When you look back on the on the Florida fam and how you guys uh, handled Anthony Richardson, what what coaching points from that game are brought into this game with Jaden Daniels? The similarities. Um, that's a great question. Uh, they're very similar, different body types. Uh, you know, obviously Anthony uh, a little heavier. He's in the two thirty plus range. Jaden is a uh, you know probably a little slighter, but still runs as hard and is as uh, elusive. Um, we. we Obviously, didn't do as great of a job as we wanted to versus Anthony. So that's been a, a you know a big point of emphasis for us is trying to keep the quarterback contained. But he's a super talented kid. Um, you know, they they uh, probably had a couple more design runs the last game. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, trying to take take uh, advantage of his elusiveness. Uh, but we have to do a, a great a great job. Um, I think they're comparable as you know as athletes and as runners. But obviously. Uh, Anthony, you know, being a little bigger, it might be a little bit more of a between the tackles guy where Jaden's probably a little bit more off tackle. Wes, then Vince. Uh, last year, there was a game. Brian, there was a game last year where, where someone had, had played y'all maybe just after playing Ole Miss. So there was talk of the offenses being similar and that would maybe help the team that was playing y'all. Can it be the same thing if you face a quarterback like a Jaden Daniels after you play? And Anthony Richardson, I mean, can some of that stuff, playing him right after the other, can some of that stuff help in terms of retention and things that you need to know? Uh, you know, obviously there's carryover. You know, every week you, you expect it to be some carryover. Um, I, I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You know, most people watch film and they try to take advantage of what they see was, pops, was a possible weakness from the previous opponent. So anything that they thought the opponent did well, I'm pretty sure they'll try to, uh, you know, capitalize on in some way. So there's always uh, things that we have to get corrected. So we always look at ourselves first and what we can correct. But obviously with, uh, you know, another athletic quarterback, um, we feel like, you know, we have some things in place to try to contain them. But, you know, a lot of their plays, just like Richardson last week, come off of broken plays. You know, that's what makes those guys specials. They have design runs, but, you know, if it's a pass play and it turns into a scramble scenario, you get a chance to see some of their athletic ability. So, you know, um, you can practice and plan for it, but when you have, you know, high-level athletes like, you know, obviously Richardson and then the Daniels kid this week, you have to be able to, uh, you know, overcome some of those broken plays when, when there was a pass play that was actually called. Two things, ask them separate. One, out of some of those breakdowns defensively in the passing game against Florida, how much of that responsibility came on your group with the linebackers in pass coverage? I, I always say it's, it's everybody's responsibility. Um, you know, everybody sees the DBs that's, you know, obviously in the one-on-one -on -one situation with the ball get thrown down the field, but they don't see, you know, if there was a pass rush error up front, a blitz error from a linebacker, or some of the underneath coverages that we, uh, you know, that we were in and we didn't do a good job. So we take full responsibility because there was a, a couple of times there were blitzes that weren't, uh, you know, executed at a, a high level. And then there were, we gave the quarterback, you know, too much time to sit in the pocket or it was a scramble scenario where we didn't do a great job of latching. So it's always all 11. I know everybody sees the end result, but we always put it on the entire defense. Um, like I said, the best pass defense, you know, in the world is a, you know, a great pass rush. So we, 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 we are trying to hone in on that and do a better job in that regard. Um, and we have to do a better job linebacker wise as far as, you know, some of our underneath coverages. And what do you see from LSU's running backs you'll be going up against? The running backs are super talented. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the better groups that we played, um, you know, so far going into game five. As a collective group, they rotate three guys. Um, you know, the, the young man that took the majority of the um, reps um, the first couple of games, Goodwin, is, is out. Um, but, you know, between the Emory uh, uh, kid, the uh, Williams kid, and obviously Noah Kane, I think they're all interchangeable, all run, you know, extremely hard. They're downhill. They break, uh, you know, a lot of arm tackles. And, you know, they're going to be a big time challenge for us. And the part about them, they're, they're you know, integral part of the passing game. They, they like to get those guys the balls in the, in the flats and, um, you know, let them, you know, do their work, you know, like almost ex an extended handoff. So it's going to be a challenge because they're going to uh, test us from sideline to sideline, but they do run hard. They're, they're a good group. Jimmy and Brent. Coach, I forgot what game I was watching, but there was a, a team that was going against a mobile quarterback. And they told all the defensive linemen, don't rush beyond the quarterback to make him to contain him. 
Is that a philosophy that you believe in? Um, we, we always talk about rush lanes with our D linemen. And, and, and I can't just say the D line, uh, linebackers and the DBs that blitz. That's, uh, like I said, another point of emphasis where we want to be a pressure team. So we don't necessarily want to, you know, have a fence at the line of scrimmage because we don't want to give them a lot of times. But we do stress the rush lanes. We're not rushing past the quarterback or giving up inside gaps. So that is uh, something we talk about all the time. And, uh, you know, that's, that is a point of emphasis this week. So we are going to try to keep him in the pocket. I mean, obviously, that's easier said than done. Uh, easier said than done because he's so talented, but that is a point of emphasis for us in trying to stay in front of him and not end up, you know, behind him in our pass rush. Coach, with, with, with the fact that the RPO stuff, mobile quarterbacks, balls in a flat to receivers, a downhill run game, how hard in college football right now is playing the linebacker position with the way the game's played? It, it's a challenge. Uh, you're going to be in some kind of conflict almost every play because of, you know, like you said, you, you named them all. <laughs> you're going to have to play sideline to sideline, you know, with the spread offenses. You're going to get conflict with the RPO as far as, you know, running pass. And then, you know, you have to be able to defend some pretty good athletes in space. Most people are going to try to find a mismatch. So a lot of times you'll see, you know, some of their high end receivers of the teams that you play, they, they line them up as a slot receiver or they put them in as a boundary too, so they can match them up against linebackers. So it's, it's a challenge. I, I, I think it's difficult. I joke with them all the time. I said, man, I'm glad I played linebacker in the years I did, because I don't know if I'd be playing linebacker right now. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's part of the job description. Um, and I think we got some high-end guys we, we, that are athletic enough and, you know, play the game the right way that, that, you know, they put themselves in position to make plays and give us an opportunity to play good defense. Patrick. Coach, with Elijah Herring, it looks like he's sort of played sort of a situational role the first few games of the season. How's he done in, in that role, and how's he sort of coming along, maybe being expanded and maybe getting some more regular rotational snaps? Um, you know, it's all – everything is, is, is earned. Uh, you know, we don't – we try not to give anybody anything. He earned the spot when we go into our 4-3 package to be the Sam linebacker, and uh, that's kind of his role right now. And he's still growing as, a, you know, every down stack Mike linebacker. Um, you know, still some of the youthful uh, mistakes show up, which is to be expected. Um, but he plays the right way, plays with a lot of energy, and he's getting better every week. It's just, you know how it is. Sometimes uh, it's like rookies in the NFL. There's a reason they don't play a lot. Same reason with freshmen in college. You know, uh, that experience means a lot. And every day he's getting better. But there's always, you know, there's one or two things you got to keep working on. And I think with experience uh, and, and time, he's going to be, you know, very, very good. Like I always say, you want him to be, you know, perfect yesterday. You know, we, that's, how, that's how us, you know, coaches are. Um, but it's a, it's a process. It's a process. But he's got a great attitude and is getting better every, every day. Great question. He stole mine. But to go off of that, when you see him get his first sack in, in the Akron game, what kind of emotions does that make you feel when you see a guy get his first career sack and you get to go over and talk to him about it? <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever had that question before. Uh, for, for myself, uh, individually, I'm always happy for all these guys. I, I think uh, college football now, we ask so much of these kids 24, 7. You know, it's almost a, a full-time job, and it's nothing different than what's going on around the country. So when they are able to have some success, some success and go out there and, you know, in front of, uh, you know, a packed stadium and, and, and make those kind of plays, I'm the happiest guy in, in, in the building because I feel like that they've earned it. You know, football is a, a tough sport for, for tough people. It's not for everybody. So when they can go out there and make plays and, you know, play at a high level, I'm the happiest guy in the building. Sometimes it doesn't look that way, <laughs> obviously, but, you know, I'm, I'm always – 100% for these kids because I know they how much time and effort they put into, you know, trying to be the best players they can be. Last question. Uh, Coach, going back to Brent's question about how versatile offenses are, right now with linebackers, is it more important to have play recognition as opposed to great speed? Um, obviously, as a coach, you want both, <laughs> right? You want both. Um, I always say this with kids, uh, players that have great speed, the speed is beneficial when you have great play recognition. If you're a very fast player and you're going the wrong direction, you're going further away from the play. 
So we want to have both. So play recognition is always going to be, you know, at the premium as far as when you're dealing with linebackers. Obviously, play recognition, and you top that with high-end athletic ability and speed, you're going to see it and get there faster, which makes the defense better. But, uh, you know, that play recognition part is always important because, like I said, if you're a great athlete and your eyes are in the wrong spot and you're going in the wrong direction, you're just getting to the wrong spot faster. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys.